In this video, we're going to learn about the new and delete operators in C++ that allow us to dynamically allocate memory. When we declare variables in C++, the space in memory for those variables is called the stack. And the stack works fine to store data when we know how much data needs to be stored at compile time. In other words, when we actually write the program. But sometimes, we only know how much data needs to be stored when a program is running. For example, in a game, we might not know how many enemy characters need to be displayed until the game is actually running. For situations like these, we use what's called dynamic memory allocation to create space for data in a different place in memory called the heap. So if we declare a variable int x, this variable x is going to be on the stack. And we can visualize memory like this. There's two portions, the stack and the heap. And that variable x would be on the stack. Variables and other things in memory are going to have some memory address, and we can store a value at that memory address. So maybe, for example, we'll store 4 into x here if we say x is equal to 4. So the stack will work fine as long as we know how much data our program needs. We can just create enough variables to handle that data or create arrays that are large enough, for example. If we don't know how much data our program needs to work with, we can use the heap instead. So here, if we say int star pointer to int is equal to new int, we're now using memory on the heap. Pointer to int is a variable on the stack. It's a special kind of variable called a pointer. This star is going to make it a pointer, and a pointer stores a memory address. The int here means that it's going to store the memory address of an int value. New int is going to allocate space for an int on the heap. This expression is going to return a memory address for that int. And that's what pointer to int is going to store, is that memory address on the heap for that int value. So right now, we're going to have on the stack a variable called pointer to int. What that variable is going to store is a memory address on the heap where an int can be stored. So for example, maybe this memory address here. Now right now, that memory address on the heap doesn't actually store a value. To store a value there, we would say star pointer to int is equal to five. This would store the value five, not in the pointer to int variable. It would actually store it in the memory address that pointer to int stores. So this star operator here is called the dereference operator. This is going to dereference the pointer. It's going to go get the memory address that's stored in the pointer variable. The value 5 is going to be assigned to that memory address. So for example, the value 5 would be stored in this memory address here, the memory address on the heap, and we would have 5 there. Now it's also possible to assign this value when the space is allocated so if here we said new int and in brackets 5, this would assign the value 5 to the memory address dynamically allocated by the new operator. We could actually take this out now. Let's actually output pointer to int, just so we can see what it looks like. What we're expecting is a memory address. And we'll also dereference pointer to int, and we'll output that as well. And we're expecting the value 5 in that case. So we'll say star pointer to int colon and we'll output pointer to int after it's been dereferenced with a star operator. So we'll save this and run it. And we get that pointer to int is some memory address. And when we dereference the pointer to int pointer, we get the value 5 as we expected. Space on the stack, such as the variable x, is going to be automatically made available again for a program to use when that space is no longer needed. So for example, when a function with a local variable called x returns, the space for x is automatically made available again for the program to use. With data on the heap, we need to explicitly use the delete operator to make that space available again when we no longer need it. So for example, if at this point here, we were done working with the space allocated by this new operator here, we could say delete pointer to int. And what it's going to do is free that dynamically allocated memory so that 
this memory address here could be used again by our program for something else. Now, one thing I should mention is that dynamically allocated memory can actually be pretty dangerous to use in the sense that we can very easily have bugs in our program with dynamically allocated memory because it's really on us as the programmer to manage that memory. Many newer languages like Python and Java have moved away from this idea of having the programmer manage dynamically allocated memory. They use a different automatic technique called garbage collection. So here's an example of a problem that can occur. If here we were to say pointer to int is equal to new int and then let's say 10. This would allocate space for another int value on the heap and it would store 10 into that memory address. So for example, instead of storing this memory address here, pointer to int would now store this memory address here. And in that memory address, we would have the value 10. The problem is we still have this memory here on the heap and pointer to int no longer stores the memory address of that data on the heap. So when this delete here runs, it's gonna free this memory address here. It's gonna make that available again. But this space here, there's no way to make that available again. It's gone. We call that a memory leak because we can't free that memory anymore. Memory leaks are a serious problem in programming and it's a very easy mistake to make when using dynamic memory allocation. We can also allocate space for blocks of memory where we can store things like arrays. So for example, here we'll say double star array is equal to new double and in brackets, we'll have four. This is gonna go out and allocate space for four double values. We're gonna have a block of contiguous memory that can store four double values. We can actually access this memory like an array and store double values there. So we could say, array at index zero is equal to five, array at index one is equal to six, array at index two is equal to seven, and array at index three is equal to eight. And we could output the array. We could say four int i is equal to zero, i is less than four, i plus plus, and we could output each element in the array. I'm gonna output array followed by the index inside of these brackets here, is equal to, and then we'll output the actual array value at the index i. We'll need to use the delete operator again, but this time we're gonna have these brackets here to free this block of memory that's been allocated. We can save this and run it. And we can see these array values output here. And this time we were able to allocate space and free space for a block of memory on the heap to store an array of doubles. We can also use the new and delete operator to store objects on the heap. So for example, let's make a simple class for representing students. We'll say class student, and our student objects are gonna have a single public member variable for the name of the student, and that'll be a string. They'll have a public member function called print, and print is gonna output the name of the student followed by an end line. And for now, we'll just leave the class like this. We'll save this and then down here, let's actually allocate space for a student object using the new operator. We'll say student star student is equal to new student. We could then set the name member variable by saying star student dot name is equal to John. We put the star dereference operator in brackets to ensure it occurs before the dot operator is applied. And we can access the print member function in the same way. And what's happening here is that the star operator here is dereferencing this pointer. And we're accessing the object on the heap. And here we're setting the member variable name to John. Here we're calling the member function print. And again, we could use the delete operator here to free the space. We could save this and run it. And we should get John as output, and we do. 
Now there's another operator we could use to access the member variables and member functions of this object on the heap. And that's the arrow operator. So the arrow operator looks like this. We say student arrow name is equal to, and we could say maybe Mary here, student arrow print, and we could call the print member function here. We could save this and run it. And now we'll get Mary here. So the arrow operator is another way we can access objects and their member functions and member variables on the heap. Now in the language C that C++ originated from, there's functions called malloc and calloc that allow us to dynamically allocate memory. There's also a function called free that allows us to free this dynamically allocated memory. We can still use those functions in C++, but there's one big difference between using malloc and calloc and using the new operator. So the new operator will call the constructor for an object when memory is dynamically allocated for that object. So right now, our student class has an implicit default constructor. Let's see what happens if we define our own constructor that accepts an argument. So up here, we're gonna say student string name, and we're gonna use the name string argument that's provided to this function to set the name member variable of the object. So we'll save this. And then down here, if we try to save and run a program now, we'll get an error. It says no matching constructor for initialization of student. And that's because the new operator will actually call the student object's constructor. So here, we should provide a name now. We'll say Mary. If we save this and run it, now it works again. So that's one big difference between the new operator and malloc and calloc. And in a similar way, the delete operator will call the destructor for an object. So it's possible for dynamic memory allocation to fail, perhaps if not enough memory is available, or if there's no contiguous block of memory available that's large enough. We can use a try-catch block to detect and handle this situation. So here we could say try, and inside the try block, we'll try to allocate space for a block of memory that's just way too large. We'll say double star big array is equal to a new double. And we're gonna put a lot of nines here. We've got nine nines, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So that's a lot of nines. That's too much space. We'll try to catch the exception that occurs. We'll say catch bad underscore allocate. It's gonna be a reference and we'll call it exp. And here we'll put some details. We'll say see out bad allocation caught colon and we'll call the what member function followed by an inline. And if we save this and run it, we get bad allocation caught and we get this standard colon colon bad allocation. So that's how we can handle dynamic memory allocation failing with the try catch block. Now, if we don't want to use a try catch block, we do have another option. We could say here, double star, and we'll call this big again, is equal to new. And here we're going to say no throw. And we'll have double. And I'll actually just copy this massive number here and paste it here. So this no throw will make it so that the new operator does not throw an exception. Instead, it's going to return null if the space can't be allocated. And we can detect that by checking if big again is equal to null. So we'll say here, if big again is equal to null, then we know that memory was not allocated successfully. So we could just output failed to allocate again, followed by an inline. And if we save this and run it, we'll get failed to allocate again. So that's how we could handle failure without having to use exceptions. Now I should mention, there's something called the placement new operator that allows us to reuse existing allocated memory. So for example, if we said double star my double 
is equal to new double 12.2. Here we've allocated space for a double and we've stored the value 12.2 in there. If we said here double star specific is equal to new my double double 20.5, this would be the placement new operator. And what we're doing is placing this double value into this existing allocated memory. So no new memory is being allocated. We're reusing the existing allocated memory. I'm going to make a separate video though on placement new, but I just wanted you to be aware that it exists. So this is how we can use the new and delete operators in C++ to dynamically allocate memory. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.